Hey guys, this is Omer from MLS.com. Another quick weekly news recap for all major MLS news and announcer of the week ending May 28th, 2018. This is episode number 149 of the recap, and the first bit of news this week comes from Phoenix Labs regarding Dauntless. And as we mentioned last week, the game officially launched the open beta this week, but there's so many people trying to log into the game, it's becoming nearly unplayable for most people. And there's a constant 30 to 60,000 player queues just to get in. Logging in takes well over two hours, and even after you get into the game, servers clearly aren't ready to handle the big influx of players, so you might run into some bugs. While this is definitely a good problem for Phoenix Labs to have, as it shows a lot of people are eager to play Dauntless, it's also super frustrating for those that are actually trying to get in. Hopefully they fix this soon. Uh, next up, as we mentioned last week, the time has finally come for Bless Online. The game officially launched their early access on Steam for anyone that bought Founders Packs today. Uh, the hype for this one has been running pretty high, so I expect the service to be quite packed. The Head Start program is only two days, so even if you didn't buy a Founders Pack, you can pay $20.99 and start playing on the 30th. Uh, New has talked a lot about their cash up in an older interview as well, and for the most part, it seems pretty good. What I like most about the game's monetization and slash cash up is that everyone can accumulate activity points just for playing the game and can turn those activity points into cash up currency, which gives everyone access to at least some of the cash shop stuff. And I expect a second look for this one soon and will probably be played on Friday Grindfest as well on stream. Uh, next up we have a small update for the remake of Raiders. Masangsoft first announced they relaunched the game quite a while ago, over a year or so I think, and we haven't heard too much about it since uh, since then. They did make a post on their Facebook page this week saying that they'll be revamping weapons and item graphics while keeping the game's low system requirements. So while it'll still probably be the same game, you'll have some gameplay changes and some character models and animations improved so it'll look a little more modern. Uh, Raiders originally shut down back in 2015 when its original developer Mayat shut down. Uh, time will tell if the relaunch version has any hope. Uh, the core gameplay was pretty fun though, and if I remember correctly, it was one of the few action MMORPGs with a persistent world. Uh, there's no time to build for release just yet either, but if you're interested in following this one, do keep an eye on their Facebook page because that's where they seem to post all their updates. Um, next, EverQuest 2 Siege of Vengeance update is now live, and all of existing accounts are eligible to create a free level 100 heroic character to try out the new content for free. Anyone who creates one of these characters gets free access to the Planes of Prophets expansion at least temporarily until June 7th, and after June 7th, they won't be able to continue leveling unless they buy the expansion outright. The Siege of Vengeance update uh, itself adds new raids, dungeons, and achievements, and more. EverQuest 2 is an oldie, but still regularly gets updated with an expansion, a big expansion launching every year or so, with smaller updates in between. I'm moving right along. Revelation Online announced their new big content update, which is titled Imperial War, and allow players to show off their loyalty to their servers with new server versus server PvP options. The game is also adding its new soul skill system, which lets players basically upgrade their abilities. Uh, there's no release date just yet for the new Imperial War update, but I expect we'll be learning a bit more soon. And looking a bit further ahead, there's still other updates on the horizon. The Chinese version of Revelation Online has uh, been talked about its 2.0 update, which improves the game's graphics, adds new zones, and other goodies to the game as well. Unfortunately, no release date for the 2.0 update has been released in the West either. Uh, next up, Jagex announced this week that RuneScape Classic will be shutting down on August 6th, mainly due to exploits as their existing technology works for both RuneScape and old school RuneScape, but not for Classic RuneScape, which was actually the original version of RuneScape launched from back in 2001. So it's been a tough for Jagex to detect cheaters, botters, and other people ruining the game, so they decided to shut it down. Uh, this shouldn't come as a big surprise because they, they announced they'd be shutting down Fun Orb recently as well. So RuneScape Classic was never really that popular compared to old school RuneScape or regular RuneScape, so seeing it shut down shouldn't be a big surprise. Regardless, it is definitely an end of an era with RuneScape Classic shutting down for good on August 6th. I'm moving right along a bit of industry data from Super Data Research. They released our April 2018 numbers, and League of Legends retook the number one spot after giving it up to Dungeon Fighter Online last month. Uh, League of Legends is back on top. Fortnite is once again making tons of money. They made a whopping $297 million in April 2018 on PC, console, and mobile combined. The game continues to mint tons of money. The top mobile game overall still remains Honor of Kings because of its success in China. It made $185 million in that month alone. And what I find most interesting though is that the hours watched for Fortnite is pretty incredible. Look at this chart below. Fortnite gets watched more than basically every other game here combined, which is definitely pretty impressive for Fortnite. I'm um, right along. The previously announced Elder Scrolls Online Somerset expansion is now live on PC and Mac, with the console version of the game launching on June 5th, 2018. We do talk about this one in previous recaps, and while Elder Scrolls Online is buy to play once, play forever, you do have to buy the expansions. It's available on Steam for $29.99, and you can see the gameplay trailer in the background for the new expansion. Our next and last of news this week comes from IMC Games regarding Tree of Savior. Two new classes are launching in the game, the Pied Piper and Exorcist. Our Pied Pipers are part of the Archer Tree, and they utilize music to control and defeat enemies, while Exorcists, as you probably guessed, are part of the Cleric Tree. Uh, no exact release date for this yet, but IMC Games did post, so probably coming soon. I expect it will be launching probably in the next month or two. In fact, a lot of the updates this week, uh, we have no concrete release dates on, which is kind of odd, but yeah, hopefully they'll be launching pretty soon.